In the last episode, we set up a project and an environment. We also set up a new site and connected the local code running on a local node server to the preview endpoint of XM Cloud, so a developer is ready to start. But the starter kit is still called SXA Starter, which is probably not the name we want to use for our client project. In this video, we go through the steps of making the solution custom development ready by renaming the starter kit. When renaming the app, we have to consider a few areas where the app name is used. First, we will make all changes a front-end development setup requires, but you can also run XM Cloud locally in Docker containers in case you want to do customizations on your CM instance. Therefore, a few additional changes are required. Before we begin, we make sure that our solution starts. Therefore, we run npm run start connected within the terminal after navigating to the app folder SXA starter. Now that we know we have a good starting point, let's check the changes of files we have done so far. As you can see, the .n file in the root folder and the config plugins TS is marked as changed or untracked. The files have been changed when running the init script and the npm install, but the .n file contains confidential data we do not want to expose in the GitHub repository. A better practice is to have a .env.template file containing everything needed but not confidential and have that stored in the repository. The .env file will be a copy of the .env.template to additionally store confidential data but remain on the local file system. As we want other developers in our team to use the same setup in a convenient way, we modify the init script to work with the .env.template. Using a .env.template file helps us in future to also manage custom environment parameters if required. So first thing we do is to rename the .env file to .env.template. Checking the changes, we can see that the .env file is treated as being deleted. The .env.template is considered untracked or new. To make sure we get rid of the .env file in our repository, I stage this file along with the config plugins TS. I provide a proper message before committing and pushing the changes. Checking the repo, I can see that the .env file is gone. Next, I want to make sure the .env file is ignored by Git and not synchronized with the repository. Therefore, I add it to the gitignore file in the root folder. Now I'm creating the .env file again and copy the content of the .env.template into the .env. I can remove all the confidential data from the .env.template. The Sitecore admin password, SQL system administrator password, reporting API key, Telerik encryption key, the federated authentication client ID and client secret, the Sitecore API key, and the JSS editing secret. Seems I forgot about the media request protection shared secret. Going back to see the changed files, the .env is already ignored. Looks good. As mentioned earlier, we still want to create the .env file when running the initps1 script. We need to make sure that this file is not created as an empty file, but copied from .env.template. Therefore, I add a log output and a command to perform the duplication. This needs to happen before any of the set and file variable commands. So let's remove the .env file and run the init script again.
seems the environment variables get set correctly. We can commit and push the changes of the remaining files. If you feel uncomfortable doing these changes in main, just create a feature branch and merge the changes to main later. Now that we've sorted this out, let's create a branch for the changes we are planning for renaming the project so we can always return to the last clean point. I use the git cli command git checkout passing the parameter b and the new branch name. In case my app is still running, I need to stop it. In Windows Terminal, I use the key Ctrl and C. I want to rename the project to Company and now go through them one by one. First, I rename the app folder name to Company. In the package.json file, I rename the name field to Company. This field can be basically named as you like and does not have any dependencies. I rename the app name to Company Dev. In our setup, this app name is not used as we use the JSS app name from .env file. In Content Editor, navigate to the site grouping item and make sure that the site name field matches the name of your site and the app name field in the package.json. Does it still work? Ah, looks good. Now, there are a few more occurrences of SXA Starter where we need to change the app name. This is mostly for running XMCloud locally in Docker containers. But why would we want to run XMCloud locally? When working on your app, the simplest way is to just connect it with the preview endpoint as we have done it so far. However, when doing data modeling or customizations and configurations to the CM instance of XMCloud, it might be handy to do that independently on your own environment and not on a shared dev environment. Please note that running the Docker container setup requires a Windows machine. Running just the front-end app locally requires only a node server that runs everywhere. In any case, both scenarios should work. Now is the time to keep that consistent. When checking the files, we see that we need to change the .env.template, the .env, which we will recreate with the init script, the Docker Compose override YAML, the init ps1, the xmcloud build.json, the certs.config.yaml, the package log.json, the render.ts, the platform project file, and the assembly info.cs. Let's check .env.template. In here, we want to change the composite project name and set it to company. And the rendering host is also www company.localhost. Let's check the init ps1 next. We need to create the certificates for company.localhost, change the rendering host environment variable to www.company.localhost and add the host entry accordingly to www.company.localhost. Now let's remove the .env file and recreate it using the init script. The findings of the string SXA starter should be gone. In the Docker Compose override, I changed the volume value to use the new path source backslash company and keep that bound to the app folder on drive C. In XMCloud build.json, I need to change the rendering host path to source company. For the correct traffic configuration, I'm changing the path to the certificates in certs underscore config YAML, overwriting SXA starter with company. In package log.json, I rename both name fields to company as well. In the render TS, it's just a comment, but it makes sense to have this set to company instead of SXA starter. For the Visual Studio project, we need to change the platform project file and rename the root namespace and the assembly name to company. 
in the assemblyinfo.cs we need to do the same. Of course, we also need to rename the solution file itself. Now let's check the Docker setup if everything works. The solution contains the app.ps1 file, a PowerShell script to start the Docker containers using the configuration we've adjusted. It checks for the latest required images and downloads them. If you're doing it for the first time, this whole process can take around 25 minutes. When restarting the containers later, it's up in seconds. Then it starts the containers. After a while I'm asked to authenticate and select the organization I'm in. If you are part of only one organization, you don't see that screen. I authenticate as part of the Sitecore Dev Relations organization. Now the solar schemas get populated and rebuilt on my local so that my content search is working in my content management environment. I'm asked to select an organization again and get forwarded to the XM Cloud dashboard, seeing all available tools. Let's open the content editor for now and see what we got. The local CM instance does not contain any site, which is expected as we created the company dev site in the cloud. As everything works after renaming the files, it is time to commit and push all changes. As you can see, many more files have changed compared to the ones we touched. This is because when we renamed the app from SXA starter to company, the dependencies containing that path changed in a lot of places. So let's stage all changes, commit with a proper message and push the changes. As the branch has not been remotely available, I need to push the branch as well. Last but not least, we need to merge the newly created branch to main so this becomes our new basis to work with. So I switch back to the main branch using the git cli and select branch, merge branch and choose the branch I want to merge which is rename project. Now I sync the changes with the remote main branch which performs a pull and a push. Done. Let's check if the changes have made it. For example, reviewing the .env.template. The changes are in. To summarize, we renamed the solution now using a custom project name, which is company, and ensured that we can still connect the local app with the preview endpoint of XM Cloud, as well as run the whole XM Cloud instance locally. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.